Portions of the following program may have been pre-recorded. Warning, the following is entirely satirical and should not be taken as truth or fact. Styles Rebel Radio and the Rebel Podcast do not own any copyrighted material that may be included in this broadcast. Viewer discretion is advised. Suspend the show right now. You're going to zip line directly into the harpoon? Yeah. How do you know about planes? I know a lot about planes. Buckle in, dude. It's going to suck. Put your hand on the screen. How did they find out? It's... Who was the one? This show has gotten infinitely more gay. The mystical land of New Jersey. Uh, I don't understand how the laws yeah. in this country work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to the Rebel Radio Show. It's live, <laughs> uncut, and uncensored on Monday right here on WSR Radio. <laughs> to my right, Shaney. Hey, everyone. On the board is Jules. Hi. I'm Radio's Rebel DJ. So it's not funny it's uh, not it's <laughs> like the he- are you are can we yeah i'm trying trying to verify oh yeah no okay yeah. so it's legit we can it's say legit. this you can say All right, it so uh, if you're listening a lot of you are probably hearing to hear first then um james earl jones has just passed away at 93 ah oh. i literally opened my phone to uh share the link as the intro was playing and that's the first thing i saw I don't know if it's legal if you can cut it, but the audio clip of him saying "No," as Darth, I'm gonna do it anyway. No, that's gonna be our intro for today. Yeah, is that bad taste? No, I don't if think so. If we open the show with "No," and then I <laughs> no, the intro is... <clears throat> yeah. this is sad. Rest yeah, in peace. Is. Well, I mean, okay. I wonder, not to just jump right in, but I wonder what this means for him selling his voice. To... Well, he already sold it, right? Yeah, he already yeah. sold it. But like I'm saying, I wonder what this means. Probably nothing, right? They're probably still yeah. going to be using. I was going to say Darth Vader, right? I, here's my early theory. You can't have an earlier theory than this. No, it this happened is the four er- minutes ago. This is the earliest the, the the theory could be. Yeah. Uh. So my theory is for the next like four months, we're gonna get sad like memorial James Earl Jones. They'll do the whole nice big yeah. You know Disney vignette or whatever. Yeah. In four months, they're gonna start cranking out Darth Vader content. I would not be surprised at all. And I wonder, like, because you know that there's, we'll talk about it, but, like, there's going to be, uh, uh, yeah, it, people are going to, there's going to be debate of, like, this is weird. I yeah. can tell that this is AI now. Now that I know that he's well, we'll passed. see. We'll see how well you can tell because uh, this should be the most advanced AI because the guy literally recorded hundreds of thousands of things for them to then feed into a mo- like he right. went in there with the sole purpose of selling his voice likeness to Disney. Right, right. <sighs> Super interesting. And I wonder too. Yeah, you're probably right. 4 months they'll do a big, uh, you know, sob story, you know, yeah. rest in peace, a big memorial honor his legacy and then yeah, start pumping out Darth Vader content and yeah. like voiced Darth Vader content. We'll hear Darth Vader more talk now more that's than what i'm saying ever we're the next star wars movie is probably going to feature darth vader like heavy <laughs> that's so... like it's gonna be this huge prelude of like the vader stories or something like that that's so sad that it's true well um rest in peace james Earl jones i guess yeah 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 that's rest crazy both the voice actor and the physical actor now are dead that played darth vader yeah damn yeah yeah because there was the whole like three or four years ago the actor died and everyone yeah. thought it was james Earl jones yeah but it was just the stand-in Interesting. Now there's no more Darth Vader, except there's going to be a lot more Darth Vader. There's yeah. There's probably going to be more Darth Vader than there ever has been. I don't like Disney, but I love Disney's product. <laughs> we'll see how the the Earl Jones estate <laughs> feels yeah. about this going forward. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, as long as they're not using a Navy ship to steal Wi-Fi and stream illegally, I think they'd be all right. The Earl family would. They'd be all right. That's a, no, yeah, I want yeah. I want I want to ride this segue yeah. out a little bit. I'm yeah. having fun on the segue. I mean, listen, going left and right. D- Disney's gonna make money despite themselves. They're billionaires that should be trillionaires. The wheel's <laughs> gonna keep spinning. I know it. James Earl Jones just a spoke on the wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Wheel in the sky keeps on turning. All right, let's talk about a fucking warship. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on? A Navy officer is demoted after sneaking a satellite dish onto a warship to get internet. Mm. So basically, hang on. Also, where is this from? A- Associated Press. That <clears throat> in- er, I I changed the words in that heading. That's worded very weird. A Navy officer demoted after sneaking a satellite dish onto a warship to get to the internet. Right? To get the internet. Okay, to I thought it was to. Okay. The the, sorry, I'm wrong. I'm a little <laughs> shaken up about Vader. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, James. Big Van Vader and this Vader are dead. <sighs> Wait, Vader's dead. Yeah, Vader died. Like I think earlier this year. 
No. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? No more Vaders. So apparently it was a woman, a U.S. Navy <laughs> chief, who wanted the internet. Her and a couple of her buddies mm-hmm. um, were basically just wanting to scroll media, check mm. sports scores, and watch movies. So I'm assuming the naval ship probably had some form of internet. Probably restricted. Yeah, probably and they're like, restricted. hey, you guys can't be watching Packers games on the internet. Here. Yeah, right, This right. is for, you know, war purposes. <laughs> yeah, we're on, you know, a warship. <laughs> can't so, be scrolling Instagram. <laughs> this, the, It was a chief? Yeah. The chief of the ship. I'm sure there's a Damn. higher, I'm sure there's a higher yeah, yeah, yeah. chief of the ship. Uh, <laughs> the chief of the ship was like, well, I'll just pay for my own fuck. And there's a satellite dish yeah. that she bought. It was an unauthorized Starlink satellite oh, dish. She oh, she got wow. it from Elon. Damn. Um, this is really a bad, this this is a bad story turned worse. And she <laughs> lied to her commanding officer. It just officer. keeps getting worse today. Yeah. James Earl Jones, now Elon Musk's installing satellites on worship. Fuck. Damn it. What has the world come to? <laughs> that really that really set the pace for the show. Yeah. Right before the start. <clears throat> All right. Sorry. Starlink satellite. Yeah. Uh basically they paid two thousand eight hundred dollars for the Starlink high performance kit and had it installed April of twenty twenty three. I mean it had a good run then. Yeah. They got it's away so with it, was it up, for a while. It was up for wait. Hmm. Was it multiple people? It says uh, uh, a former information systems technician and senior leader and senior leaders paid 2800 for the Starlink high performance kit. So they all went in on it. it That's like. kind of what I'm understanding. Which it, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. were right. all going to be on the boat together. Why can't they all <clears throat> Yeah, they're all going to use it. it. Well, and that's something, too. Like, as soon as it goes up, don't the higher ups notice? Like, Yo, there's right. another there's another Wi Fi being pinged off yeah. of this boat. Right. Like, I'm confused like, the... why they didn't. They're the Navy. And it's yeah. satellite. So like that should be very easily detectable. So this is what, over a year. A yep. year and how many months? Couple. Okay. Well, we'll call it a year and four months, just a random guess. Um that's too long for you to not notice a secret Wi-Fi system on your right. Navy warship. <laughs> Constantly bringing in data. Right, right. That That's terrifying. Been, that could have been a spot. Or, you know, and, and, and I guess this is where the real issue is with it. Um, one hacker, one yeah, hacker right. getting the IP to that satellite signal right. gives away this entire warship. Right, if there's like one, yeah, hacker-esque IT savvy person mm-hmm. on that ship who has nefarious intentions, they're fucked. But like you said, it, it's I don't even think it has to get to that point because, I mean, granted, <clears throat> we don't know what this warship was doing, but if it's maybe patrolling the border somewhere, right, and yeah. another country gets a fucking ping going, oh, there's a signal coming from out here, that gives that away too. Yeah, right. So when did they get caught? Is my question. Like when? Because th- it says that it was installed in April 2023. The boat IT guy was like, "What's the satellite yeah, doing here?" The they got a new IT guy on the boat. Yeah, right. What? And that's the thing. It must have been a pretty thick operation. There must have been a decent amount of people who knew about this to keep it under wraps. For do you, do you as think that was the was. case? Do you think it was like, "Oh, we're all secretly going to go in on this"? Probably. Or do you think they didn't? really think it through that it could be an issue i would bet a good bet i i I bet money on like maybe 10 people or whatever knew at first and then it slowly trickled to this like oh what's this private wi-fi that's around here in the middle of the ocean well and i think it's one of those things where we're saying how did everyone not know everyone probably did know and they kept it under wraps from yeah you know like it was probably just a big camaraderie like don't ask don't tell hush hush you can use it just don't say anything, you know? In my mind, and I could be wrong, in my mind, there is a higher up that's on this ship that didn't know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Mm -hmm. is my issue of the guy never opened his phone and saw, like, oh, Wi-Fi signal from the middle of the fucking ocean that's always present no matter where we are. If I had to guess, (laughs) the the highest up people that would have been checking what kind of Wi-Fis are on the... were in on it. That's my assumption. 
the they, highest they up that it, using it too? The highest up that it could have possibly gone. I'm not saying the highest up ranking people on the ship. Yeah. I'm saying because those people probably don't check all the different. Should be part of their morning routine. Pings, you know. Wake up, swab the poop deck, check the Wi-Fi. Check the... I don't know what goes on in a naval <laughs> hangar. <laughs> Apparently. There's a poop deck on those, right? Yeah, it yeah. It didn't reach the whole ship, so it was oh. like. Oh. Damn, naval warships are huge. I mean, I, yeah, I know they're big ships, but also, this is Starlink. That's their Come whole on, thing. Come on, Elon. That's <laughs> their whole thing, because it's supposed to be available anywhere, right? Get your shit it's together, satellite Elon. satellite internet. Poor, poor review on Starlink on their airport. Can't yeah, even cover right. one naval ship? <laughs> Come on, man. How many satellites do you need to cover a naval ship? First the Cybertruck, now this. This guy's a bad apple. Cybertruck's <laughs> been a lot of hot water <laughs> recently. Cybertruck is bad. Have we talked about Cybertruck on here? A little bit. I almost brought in a story today about a Cybertruck or, or Tesla telling a customer to stop complaining about the Cybertruck. Um, so this dude's door kept flying open because the latch wasn't made wrong oh where it God. locks in. Yeah. And the dude was on the highway and his back door flung open and his uh, one-year-old was in the back oh seat. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. That's terrifying. Yeah, but he kept messaging uh, whatever Tesla support or yeah, you know, customer yeah. service about it. And like, hey, how do I get this fixed? Where do I go to? Because to... I can't have my door keep flying right. open. It's not latching right. And they, because he kept messaging him and wasn't getting anywhere, they told him to stop reaching out. Damn. Yeah, I think the, I think Tesla was, I think it's an Icarus situation. I think Elon flew a little too close to the sun, this guy. Elon was breaking into too many people's houses, busting open the Iliad. Dude, he really, he really was. <laughs> he really, really was. He flew that, uh, that car to the, to space. Yeah, didn't they launch a Tesla to Mars or something at yeah. one point? Yeah, I think he flew too close to the sun, that guy. I'll tell you what. Tesla got burnt up. That Elon guy? Still burning. Bad Can't apple. put the battery out. Bad apple in my books. All right. I don't like that Elon guy. Don't don't let him come around. All right. Let's yeah. go back to the first year and when Shane was saying that Elon Musk is Iron Man. <laughs> can we get that? Things have changed. Can we get the duality of Shane side by side someone? <laughs> Things have changed. Things have changed. I'm a... I'm a grown man. Celine, I'm going to need you to go ahead and pull those two clips. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? What? Tried to hide the network when she called Stinky by renaming it as a printer. Oh, she named oh, shit. <laughs> she named no, she named the Wi Fi Stinky, but she labeled it as a printer so that they didn't catch on to the fact that it was like a Wi Fi system. Listen, That's really funny. I feel like this this is a naval ship, right? Yeah. I feel like people in the Navy not the Navy. Not I feel like people Navy. in the Navy should be more acclimated to technology than I am because I am not. Mm -hmm. I am very far behind the eight ball on what you can do with computers. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, however, if I'm on this naval ship for at least a year, because yeah. this has been up for at least a year. Right. If I'm on this ship for at least a year and right. within that year, I'm seeing this printer. And no one has ever talked about this printer, and nothing's ever been printed of it, and I can't find this printer. This printer named Stinky. Right. <laughs> it has right. a silly name. What are, what are the other I printers know, named? Yeah, probably all like something serious, or like probably just like printer underscore underscore zero zero. HP two zero, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> probably normal ass names, and this one's just Stinky. <laughs> because that leads me to believe if this is named Stinky, and no one questioned the fact that it was a printer for this year... That means the other printers on the ship are named silly things too. That's my only logic of maybe like, you might be right. Hey, I printed the poopy doo doo. <laughs> yeah, you better yeah. go pick it up from that one. It's not at P McGee over here, officer. I printed at <laughs> poopy McStink pants. <laughs> the files are there. The fact that they fucking disguise as a printer is kind of wild. Though. Yeah, that's really smart. I mean, is it though? I feel like you should be able to find that. They got quick. away with it. There's got to be an IT guy on the boat. Yeah, the navy has to have an IT guy. It's just kind of wild to me that the warship was so big that the Starlink Wi-Fi didn't even cover the whole warship. They must not have bought premium. I guess not. They must have had a standard subscription to Starlink. I guess. I I, I or they couldn't use like the Wi-Fi extenders because it'd be too obvious. Yeah, they couldn't clip the little. Yeah, the little plugins to the, extend the Wi-Fi. The it came things. with a bunch. They just couldn't use. They're like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> We'll just put them all around our it's room. It's for the printer. <laughs> we'll just put them all around our different rooms. <laughs> there was a letter about the box, or the network put in the commander's um, suggestion box. Mm. That it was active? Yeah. Oh, so someone ratted on them. Wow. 
Damn. Wow, they got fucking ratted out. She was relieved, quote, due to a loss of confidence in her leadership abilities. Fuck off. I feel like Elon uh, really went against the United States government here. Yeah. 216-859-8699. Let me know if you have a stinky printer. Hi, this is Melissa. And hey, it's Matt. Coming at you from Synergy Music Studio. We are a recording and production studio located on the south side near Chicago. Check us out online at SynergyMusicStudio.com. We offer recording, mixing, and mastering. And follow us on Instagram at Synergy Music Studio. Rock hard. Hey, Style here, and I want to take a minute to talk to you about Hellbender Vinyl, a proud supporter of local and independent music and a proud supporter of WSRR Radio, Hellbender Vinyl is one of America's most trusted custom vinyl pressing plants. Located in Upper Lawrenceville on Butler Street, Hellbender is Pittsburgh's first and only vinyl record pressing plant and is here to help local bands and artists get their albums onto vinyl. Hellbender Vinyl offers vinyl record pressings to ensure that albums don't just end up as a bunch of ones and zeros floating around somewhere on the internet. So, if you're interested in giving your album a physical release, you can visit hellbendervinyl.com to start the conversation today. Plus, every customer at Hellbender Vinyl receives five free test presses to review at no additional cost. Hellbent on quality, hellbent on service, hellbendervinyl.com. I'm Jeff Stritch. I don't know Shane. I never met Shane. He's not on air right now. I'm on air. But you can catch Shane when he's off air because he's actually on air doing his show off air weekdays at 3 p.m. right here on WSRRadio.com. Hey, welcome back to the Rebel Radio Show. Welcome. I didn't jump the gun. You were late. Party's over, Grandpa. Party's over, Grandpa. Let's talk about aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Talk about aliens. Hey, 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 I want confirmation for all the cops listening, um, <laughs> which after last week's show about the bomb, they should be. So yeah. like, I figure now's the time to ask. Uh, police across the U.S. are given UFO handbooks as they pose significant safety risks to local authorities. Oh. <laughs> Watch out, officer. Yeah, the so aliens are coming. Apparently, a bunch of local PDs across the United States have been receiving handouts, pamphlets, little booklets, rule books about how to deal with UFOs. And, like, how do and they the, know? Well, the reason isn't even like, oh, obstruction of airspace or if. if and other yeah. nations' aircraft that you don't identify lands, or yeah. it's not about that. It's about because the life that is on said unidentified flying object might pose a problem to your authority as a oh, police no. man. Oh no! A- an alien shows up, and the officers are like, "Get all that. Take me to your leader. Bullshit out of here. I, I am." am- where, where, I'm the sheriff of this county. Where, pray tell, does the sheriff uh, reside over? <laughs> what county is this? I don't know. Where, what state are these aliens landing in that he sounds like that? Milwaukee, Tucky, or whatever you were talking about. Texarkana? Sure, same <laughs> thing, buddy. Yeah. Cala, what? New York, Anna. Anna? Yeah, I don't know. All right. My issue is, how do you write a rule book for this encounter? Mm-hmm. Without prior knowledge of how they, to handle these encounters, they're just prepping. This is I just prep. I think this is a cautionary tale based on experience. <laughs> you think? How uh, would you know these work? You think the police officers have encountered some UFOs in the past, and they're not telling us, and they're like, "All right, let me just send out a handbook." I'm not writing a handbook about how to medically use mercury, because if I did, I'd be completely guessing, and people would get would die. Sure. So, why would I write a handbook 
about how to handle UFOs and assert your authority over them if I don't have prior knowledge on how to handle UFOs and assert your authority over them. I think this is just more of like uh get your get your crossbows ready. Get your spears ready. Shoot them. Shoot them. Take them down. Yeah, over think, any major city. Well, I mean, I think this is just like a like a, all right, if we ever contact aliens or anything on on identified they need to understand that we are the authority and not them was do you, this written by area 51 do you think this is yeah a, who is this written by That's the kinda... government this is from <sighs> june of this year these have been oh out for gosh. a while these have been in circulation for a minute now i uh, guess is how they started the summer <laughs> do you think this is in direct correlation to the body cam footage we had uh was at the very start of the year yeah, yeah maybe yeah, end of yeah, last yeah. year about the aliens landing in nevada in like right outside of Las Vegas, and there's body cam footage of like cops showing up on the scene, and people said they were in their backyards, and the other cops saw it. And listen, I know people talk about this. This is it's stupid, but do you think alien like how likely is it now that aliens come back? Have All you right? s- have you seen They Live yet since the last time we had this conversation? I saw They Live when we watched it. When we when uh wait, <laughs> is that the one with Rowdy? Yeah, yeah. Did we watch They Live Together? No, I watched it. They don't live together. We don't live together. <laughs> we used to. We used to. But the whole poop thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giant poop debacle of 09. How could I forget? You know, you're not allowed to talk. About, <laughs> legally, you know we're not allowed to talk about this. All right. The NDA said I could disclose the title, and that's Well, it. yeah. I mean, we just can't get into detail about it. <laughs> no, or either. mention the third party. <laughs> so oh, we'll just leave his name party. out of it. Him, him or her's name out of it. It was a great party. We had a great time. Someone didn't. That's why <laughs> that we're in the situation we are. Uh, why it, are cops getting this? Have why? you seen They Live since the last time we talked about aliens? You just said yes. I don't know. I know that last October we watched it for something, and so I watched it then. All right, oh, so Mister. That's right. Yeah. That wasn't last October. That was like two years ago. Fuck. Time flies. <laughs> Time is a concept of human perception. No, uh, don't tell me about it, bub. Speaking of which, it's almost October, so if you have any ideas for conspiracy theories, WSRRradio.com. Head to the Discord server. It's newly revamped, so you can talk about uh, theories. That's my new Halloween sound, everybody. We're not going <laughs> to use Working on new Halloween We're sounds. We're not going to use that. Uh, but, you know, we talked about subliminal messaging. That's I said, uh, if you haven't seen They Live, watch yes. They Live. That's yes. right. Um, that is, to answer your question that I cut you off from, before we went into the poop debacle of 09. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we both signed that NDA. Four more years. Four more years and we'll have a whole show on it. Uh, but no, that is that is my answer to that. That is, I, I, if there are aliens here, mm-hmm. that is the scenario in which they are. They look like us. I, yeah, I think it's they live. I, why not? Fair enough. You got to put on the special police officer sunglasses. Yeah, you got to have the... Uh, I don't even know what department this is. The police department. <laughs> Unidentified aerial phenomenon. That's what UAP stands for. Unidentified anomalous oh, phenomena. Yeah. Unidentified anomalous phenomena. Sounds UAP. like a cognito hazard to me. Ooh, sounds like magneto. Doesn't. <laughs> you're just you're just picking words out now. Sounds... You're just hearing the words I'm saying, and you want to <laughs> say a similar word. That's what's going on. Listen. I love X Men. <laughs> not has nothing to do with this. All right, you're right. <laughs> Who's Magneto? What? <laughs> um, I love aliens though, and I hope that they come down soon. And I do think that uh, you don't re- you don't have a reference guide for dealing with UAPs if you don't have reference. When you, you can't make a reference guide without so reference. So you think that they've been here before, and you think that this is like is this top secret information? Well, is that police... why they aren't showing the whole article because or the whole pamphlet because No, they aren't showing the whole article because I refuse to pay for online articles. <laughs> Do Listen. they not show the whole pamphlet here because it is top secret information only for police officers? Maybe. The police need to monitor the commercial from Kentucky that went into space. Oh. So now they're expecting tourism. If, they're expecting them if to Kentucky come by. is the is the department that rolled this out first. Yeah. So my like, guys, we have to be prepped now. We have to send this to every other department. We in the opened US the invite. To, now yeah. we have to be prepped. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, that's you can't have a reference guide if there's no reference. I guess. You, I mean, you're not wrong. It's based off all the movies. 
Yeah, like <laughs> that's the thing. I want to know. I want to read the whole pamphlet and see what they're saying to the officer. Like, I want to know what the police officers are knowing. Well, you don't like. <laughs> I don't think you can go online. And, I mean, maybe old ones and look at like current officer handbooks, right? Probably. No, maybe you can because like those are laws. I don't know if you can do that. That might be illegal. That well, that's, that's like what I'm saying. Like, I don't think you can just find this information very publicly. So I would assume yeah. this is in the same camp as that. Probably. Camp Roswell. Um, camp Laszlo? <laughs> attention campers. <laughs> uh, you, you see the end of that show? Yeah, he gets he goes to jail. Yeah. Uh, what's the name? Lump- Lumpus? Yeah. Camp Counselor. L- camp Counselor. Is it Lumpus? Lumpus? Is yeah. Lupus a disease? No. Lupus. Lupus is the disease. Yeah. So it is a loop. Lumpus? 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 I don't know. Lumpus isn't the camp counselor in that show. Like, he, it, that's how the show ends. Like, he tied up the actual camp counselor, camp camp leader in a closet, and, like, stole his uniform. He's actually a criminal on the run. Isn't it, like, another character from another show, too? No, it was going to be Heifer from Rocco's Modern Life, uh, but they couldn't legally use that character model because it was mm. a different studio at the time. Interesting. Um, so the actual like real counselor that's revealed in the last episode mm-hmm. kind of looks like Heifer. Believe it or not, for listeners at home, we're both engaged actually. So <laughs> I don't know how we pulled it off. Either believe, one of us. Believe, but... believe it or not, this started as a conversation about UAPs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, this, this. I, I think this is legit. But again, I don't think you can have a reference guide without reference. So they had to have based it off something, even if that something was. And you think it's Las they Vegas. live? And you think it's they live? I don't know. I don't think they based it off they live. But well, I'm think... saying you think the aliens that they encountered were like they live esque, where it's like, oh shit, we have to stop eating McDonald's and then we can see the aliens. <laughs> I don't know. It's a hell of a theory. Maybe we'll talk about that in October. How Whoa! McDonald's, how McDonald's blinds us to the alien investigation? <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a good theory. The worst part is, it's believable. It's, you, know, you, you, know could, you could write an entire conspiracy around that, and people would believe it. Matt Pat's gone. That's a game theory. That's that's a certified game theory. I'm using game it of now. life, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. No, you um first. Go ahead. Um, I like aliens, and I hope that they have come down. And I maybe it is it, they live esque, where like we have to do something to see them, and they are walking among us. That would be scary. I don't know. It's just I think about like how people have said before. It's equally terrifying that either uh, uh, we live in a universe that has other species and they haven't contacted us, or we're completely alone. Yeah, e- equally, equally terrifying. Right, right. Or it's all simulated reality theory. <sighs> we're just in a drawer on a floppy disk somewhere. Damn it. Two one six eight five nine eight six nine nine is the number to text in if you've seen a UAP. I'm the Pidge. I'm isn't real. Oh, wait, this is the wrong show. I'm talking about the Pigeonhole, everybody. Comes out once a month. Send some stuff into the Styles for Radio Discord page. I will give my such beautiful two cents on it. I know you guys care so much. For Give me some slack. I like doing this. So, your friends invited you to their annual Super Bowl party, but you can't remember if that's the sport that's played with the sticks or with the bat. No fear, just break out your trusty sporting event shirt from genericclothes.com. But what's that you say? It's election season and your family has color-coded their entire personality again? Go ahead and play your part as the one true middleman by wearing your ambiguous political statement t-shirt. Yes, for all of your unwanted social interactions, geopolitical statements, or ideologies about the fashion industry in general, genericclothes.com has you covered. Once again, that's genericclothes.com. The Artificial Intelligence Podcast is the only show written, voiced, and scored entirely by AI. All episodes are available now on stylesribbleradio.com. Your dad didn't leave for cigarettes. He's out in the car listening to the Rebel Radio Show.
Welcome back to the Rebel Radio Show. If you're just joining us, James Earl Jones is dead. They found the printer. Lumpus was not the camp counselor the entire ah. time. And now you're spoiling everything. And now the bands are making fake music with fake people and fake listeners. Damn it. You're listening to WSRR Radio. We're saving the underground music scene. We're brought to you by Synergy Music Studio out of Chicago, genericclothes.com, and Hellbender Vinyl out of Pittsburgh. So if you're working on your next album release and you haven't got your music or your tracks tuned just right yet, something's a little off about them. They don't yeah. have the fullness they need. Yeah. Send it over to Synergy Music Studio in Chicago for their reamping service, Ooh. and they can get your tracks, album, and radio ready. Then, when you're ready to release that album, why just throw it out on Spotify like everyone else does? Yeah. Why not have a physical album release? Go to hellbendervinyl.com. Oh they are gosh. one of America's most trusted custom vinyl record pressing plants, and they work with local and independent artists all the time to provide quality, real, physical vinyls that you can distribute your albums on. And then when you're ready for your album release, concert, gig, or party, head over to genericclothes.com and maybe pick up a shirt that says band or music band or famous artist. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, I like that. Don't, don't take my ideas, all right? I, that just, was, I'm I was just kind of laying like the groundwork that. for my ideas. I like it. That, <clears throat> listen, yep. that sounded really good, and now I want to do all of those things. And you should. I and will. everyone listening should. Yeah. And then when you do, go ahead and text 216-859-8699. Say, hey, I did that thing that you guys told me to do. Remember yeah. that one time? But what you shouldn't do, you know, since we're all about supporting local and independent music, what yeah. you shouldn't do is make a fake production studio and record company mm. that has AI write all your music and then, on top of that, uploads them to Spotify and assigns hundreds of thousands of AI bots to then stream that music. That's such a... Like, it seems like it's either really complex and in-depth or it's really it's simple. It's really smart. It's or really it's really, smart. really simple, like one, two. You're taking yeah. one thing and adding it. You know, it's either one or the other. But it it's it is really smart. It seems like something that should have happened a long time ago. Like this is not advanced AI by any means. Yeah, right, right, right. You're you're taking two AI modules that have been around for a while now. So like people make AI music all the time. You got right. like the fucking the Frank Sinatra covers where it's Peter Griffin singing right. My Way or something, right? Right. So like AI music and even original AI music has been around for a long time. Right. And you're taking that and combining it with something that's arguably been about been around longer, which is just internet bots. Right, and like you see clicking them on, bots, yeah. essentially. You see them on Twitter, you see them on Facebook, and they're interaction bots. That's all they right. are. And they, you can even buy them. You can buy services. Yeah, they're, they're easy to buy. Right. Yeah. We do it all the time at WSR <laughs> Radio <laughs> for all of our listeners. They're we just are bots. bots. <laughs> um, no, but so you can, you can buy bot service anywhere. And that was like a whole thing when Elon Musk was still on Twitter. Do you remember yeah. that? Like, you'd always go off about all the bots that were on Twitter yeah, before yeah. he bought it. Um, so that's all they did is combined these two things so they would have AI make songs. And I tried, I, I because it says a couple of the song names in here. Yeah. Um, I tried to look up the names on Spotify to see if, like, I could listen to them. Mm. Because my first thought was, are they actually songs? Or is it just, is it like, just dead air? it could be dead air, it right. could be just random beeps and noises and yeah, shit, a right. buzz. Right. Because, like, it doesn't matter if no one's actually listening. Right, it's because it's all bot listeners. Yeah. It's, all, they're, they're, it's just a money-making thing. Yeah, so they, they pushed out these tracks on Spotify, and I'm assuming most streaming platforms to maximize profits. Yeah. Um, and then they just bought bots to make streams, to stream the music, and they made $10 million. And it's like... It's so crazy. It's so crazy to me because, like you said, these are two concepts with AI that have been around for a long time, and so, like, I feel like bot restrictions in terms of having bot listeners or bot viewers or mm -hmm. bot likes or whatever is very loose, and this yeah. is a situation of the system being abused, right? right? And so now it's time for Spotify or whoever, probably Spotify to say okay well we need to really crack down on what we detect as bot viewer or bot listenership right right um interesting that it has like taken this long for these two concepts to come together and then there be like consequences from it you know or they're needing to be repercussions yeah you know what i mean so i'm gonna read this uh little article here from the avclub.com mm-hmm the U.S. government rusted a North Carolina man on Wednesday in what we're pretty sure is the first instance 
of legal action against what's essentially a brand new crime freshly minted by the 21st century, <laughs> allegedly making more than $10 million by using AI to create, quote, instant music Jeez. and posting it to streaming services, then using more than 10,000 fake accounts to generate streams and streaming income for it. That's weird that they use, what, instant music? Yeah, their quote was instant music. And so it's not just one guy from what it seems because... It seems like it's a, a group. Yeah, it, like it a... seems like a whole fake studio. Yeah, at least a right. couple people because okay. there are texts back and forth between... And one of them was the producer, maybe the other one was the programmer. Yeah. Uh, but there are texts back and forth now that have, that have been um, publicly accessible because this is going to court yeah. of... One of them telling the other, no, we we don't need to make music, we need to make instant music. Or we're not making new music, we're making instant music. And I wonder if that is, like, their... Legal, legal step around? Right, their legal stipulation, like, hey, it's not music, it's instant music. Oh, so here's... This is an interesting part, too. Mm -hmm. So they're posing as the studio because they're not only releasing this music on Spotify and Apple and everything, they're releasing it under different artists. So, like, they're mm -hmm. making fake artists... And music, so it's not just one, you know, artist making ten thousand songs. It's different artists making different songs, and they're all fake. So it's like a lot of bots. Yeah, a lot of different bots doing a lot of different things. Well, so the, my thought was, okay, this is a studio that's releasing music on Spotify, and the artist could even like if it's like uh, random John Smith is the artist, right? right. And he has 10,000 songs of fake songs because they're AI generated. Right. That was my thought. That's not the case. There's also different accounts, artists that are uploading these songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've so just made up people, made up artists. A bunch of different fake yeah. artists and then a bunch of different fake listeners for those fake artists. Uh, the New York Times reports that the 52-year-old Michael Smith... I was so close to this dude's legit name just by picking a <laughs> name out of my ass. Uh, who allegedly spent the last several years filing Spotify and other streamers, including Apple Music, Amazon Music, with AI-generated songs uh, with names like Zygroscopic and Atmologic. What? Uh, all attributed to different artists with fake names using fake accounts created through purchased email addresses to boost their streaming numbers. At first, uh, he apparently tried using his own music or licensing other people's, uh, but pretty clearly a volume game, so it came in the bots. Mm. The eventual technique apparently worked so well that in an email listed in the Times, Smith apparently bragged that he'd made more than 12 million since embarking on the project back in 2019. That's so wild. Because he'd been doing it for a while then. Yeah. 2019 he started. <clears throat> and he just got caught. Interesting. So I guess, okay, this is something that, I mean, yes, this is like, quote unquote, old AI tech, but like, he's been doing it for a little bit, or they, is is it just one person, or is it? This is the main guy, but there are like, emails and texts and stuff disclosed, so maybe he was just bragging to people that knew? Yeah, I don't, that's interesting. I wonder if this is a part of some like, uh, uh, real music production company? who realized, like, a, a glitch in the system sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, they realized they could do this, and then... Without even having to pay an artist. Yeah, right. And then just exploited it. That feels like... That's my theory. So AV Club apparently found the music, <clears throat> the website I'm reading this from. Mm. And this is how they describe the music that they listen to. Uh, I gotta find the exact... I want the exact... Okay. Yeah. Baby's first electronica bullshit... Or YouTube ad music. So that is what so this sounds like. So it's real music. It's like corporate stock music, essentially. Interesting. Where? How did they find it? Does it say how they came across it? Cause... Well, so they, they give the names of like the albums and, and songs and stuff, at least some of them. Uh, so like yeah, they must have right. tracked it down before they took them off Spotify, I'm assuming. Or maybe they're still up on some streaming services, or maybe only some of them got taken down because, again, there's probably a good amount out there. Well, this is okay. How do you purchase emails, <clears throat> uh, like, just to make fake people? I mean, that's probably a whole illegal activity that's in itself, what I'm right? Thinking. The songs that the AI CEO provided to Smith originally had file names full of randomized numbers and letters, such as. N underscore Z A two B two D seven four dash one six two one. So like, at first they were 
like just randomized numbers and letters dot mp3 and then yeah they changed the names charges against smith include wire fraud and money laundering yeah you can face up 20 years in prison if convicted yeah probably so this is such a weird case though because like it's smart it's it's crazy that no one else thought of this or if they have that they haven't been caught and it hasn't been publicized because yeah right Again, this isn't a hard concept to wrap your head around. Yeah. So he can't be the first guy to think of this in 2019. So, like, there probably are other people doing this. Mm. And, like, I feel like YouTube especially probably has content like this. Yeah, where people are just YouTube making clip. bots to, yeah, to mm. gain revenue. That's interesting. Because when it's, like, like with Instagram or something like mm-hmm. that, it's kind of just an echo chamber. It doesn't matter unless... Yeah, unless like you're sponsored, you're not making money off yeah, it. Yeah, right. But even if you're sponsored, wouldn't you? You would assume that a sponsor that's actually paying you is checking your account to see what you're posting and to make sure that it's not like bot activity. And that's yeah. At least I assume how you get. Well, hang a... on. Have you heard about the Tesla Cybertruck thing? I know we talked about the Tesla Cybertruck already. Right. But right I had right. this conversation yesterday with uh, Evan the Pitch. Yeah. So if you go on Instagram and just like scroll through reels and shit uh-huh. of, of memes, most of them will have like the description for the Tesla Cybertruck. Like if you go to the Tesla website, the fucking schematics and breakdown of what the Cybertruck is. Because what? Instagram and Meta now dictate that as an educational or informative post based on what's in there. Their AI system that like oh, this post isn't user-friendly, so we're not going to recommend it a lot, Yeah, is now reading that description going, oh, it's just an inform- informative post about the Cybertruck, and it's recommending it more. Wow. Yeah, so people have found out how the AI breaks down, like, essentially how things are shadow banned and promoted. Yeah. Uh, and so they're using the Tesla Cybertruck description on memes just so they get viewed more as yeah. opposed to flagged more. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, so That's if you're on Instagram, number one, go to WSRR Radio. Yeah. Uh, and number two, yeah, uh, yeah. number two, uh, if you see the Tesla Cybertruck in the description, that's what that means. The the meme owner is just trying to promote it without, you know, getting banned or using interesting. hashtags. Very, I did not know that. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So, I mean, that's, but again, that brings me back to this is, yes, technically this is wire fraud and money laundering. Yeah. But it also begs the question of, okay, well, if I am just an artist who is releasing music on Spotify, right? Mm -hmm. Um, If I'm Gavin Michaels, I'm going to have to send this to him now. If I'm Gavin Michaels and I'm releasing music on Spotify, Plastic Decays just came out. Everyone should go stream it there on WSR Radio. Yeah, buddy. Um, But this is essentially saying if I were to go as Gavin Michaels and listen to this song 200 times by myself, just on repeat, playing it on my own account. yes. That would still be counting as plays. Yeah. yeah. And I would just be generating my own revenue. Granted, nowhere yeah. near the tens of thousands of streams that this guy's paying boss to do. Right. But in this hypothetical, if I just like left it on loop 24-7, you know, on an iPad I had somewhere. Yeah. And just looped the song from my own account, wouldn't that still be under the same charges? Like, how is that different than just paying boss to listen to it? You yourself are still streaming all of your own music. I don't know, cause then that gets... also this is hypothetical. Gavin Michaels doesn't doesn't do this. <laughs> right, right. Well, that gets into the conversation of like bot farms and stuff like that. Yeah, the people who will sit in like a warehouse or something like that with twenty, fifty iPhones, mm-hmm. all clicking the same thing, or like all uh, uh watching the same couple of videos, yeah. or like it. It's is it legal is it illegal is it because that's if you own all of those phones and you own all of those accounts is that legal right is that illegal is that i i it's this is an interesting yeah it creates an interesting is talking it, point is of it like, just the concept that because he was able to do it instantly it's illegal because then is it a loophole or is there a legal... I feel like there has to be... Because this is what I would be arguing in court. If I was this guy's lawyer, that would be my point of like, well, okay, they're not real people, but you can't prove at any time like anything's a real person, you know, just mm. from a stream. It starts, oh, this mm. was streamed 10 times. How do I know if that was... Unless I physically go in yeah. and look at 10 IPs right. and make sure those IPs link to real accounts. Right. And we're talking 10 people. This is like tens of thousands of people. So, like, how do you, you know, how do you break that down? 
I, I, I mean, it's, it's bullshit, but I, I could sit know. here and make the claim, oh, all of the Foo Fighters streams on Spotify are bots. Because yeah. prove to me they're not. Right. Or like uh, 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 Dave Grohl in his basement with 15 million I- right. iPhones that are all playing. It's just streaming the new Foo Fighters He's album. Just streaming yeah. the new Foo Fighters album by himself. But like, yeah, what is, is that? Is that legal? Is that right. illegal? Is that where does that lie? Interesting. I I don't know, and I feel it's one of those things where I feel like it should be legal, so that makes me feel like it's probably illegal. There's <laughs> there's probably some kind of loophole, or there's not loophole, but there's probably some kind of law or something in place that yeah. says. You know, you can't have X amount of devices playing your own music if you are said artist that would be currently generating revenue. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So when when we first started radio uh, and we were on a, a far uh, worse uh, underground station, yeah. um, the software that we broadcast on when it worked um, had a live audience counter on it. You could mm-hmm. see listeners yeah. as they were tuning in real time and show on the actual radio software itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, g- because it was a college station, typically people had like maybe three to five listeners for a two hour show. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we started getting into like 400, 500 listeners, the administrative started to go, oh, well, you're you're flubbing these numbers. These aren't real listeners, you know, and they they on several occasions asked me if I'm going to like the editing bay in the school opening up streams of the radio wow. to boost our numbers interesting and that's not something i'd ever even fucking thought of yeah right You're but like, i oh, guess that's a good idea <laughs> right but, oh yeah no i should now we can hit 600 <laughs> yeah right uh, no but like, i guess people had previously done that to try oh, and boost their numbers interesting so like and and again even in this scenario i don't see how that would have been illegal for that um but you know i, I guess when revenue is involved it gets a little stickier but at, yeah, at right. the end of the day, you know, even if you're just a local artist who's uploading to Spotify and you're, like I said in my scenario, just streaming yourself yeah, right, on right, an right. iPad all day, um, I think it's just more so like you know that you're doing that and those aren't real listeners. I think that's the biggest deterrent a normal yeah. artist would face. Yeah, and now, see, I do, I am genuinely very curious if I'm an artist, if I'm a small artist and I buy... 500 iPads or something yeah. like that and I just stream my new album constantly for 24 hours a day on all 500 of these iPads does that count like is that legal and where what would they get me on if it is illegal you well, know what I mean well also this brings and I know we only got a couple minutes here um if you if if all of these bots are streaming this music so often that he's making millions of dollars, mm-hmm. so these have to have millions of listens essentially, right? Because you're making maybe a tenth of a cent on every play, um, on Spotify, sure. And then I guess you multiply that by you know Amazon and and iHeart and TuneIn, whatever he's right. on. Um, but if you're making that kind of money, that means it's amassing a pretty good amount of listens that it's showing on the on the streamer on Spotify. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I, I know you use Apple Music, right? Yeah. So I don't know if yours does this, because I'm not familiar with Apple Music, but, mm-hmm. you know, I'll listen to a new artist I've never heard of, a local artist. Yeah. And then the next six things that gets recommended are just similar-sounding local artists. Yeah, 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 Was yeah. this getting recommended to people after their queue had finished because oh, it was so popular? It was like, hey, this is a really popular lo-fi song that's going around. Yeah, I wonder if people in... Where was this? This is North Carolina. I wonder if people around the area, the North Carolina area, were like getting recommended local music, right? Yeah. Local music, and it was just this weird AI. What was it called? Zygot. Yeah. Zygotes. Zygotic. Zym, Zym, yeah. There's just literally just a bunch of like Zyme Bedouing. Yeah, just a bunch of Z names. <laughs> weird. Very very strange. With al or with uh, artist names. Such as Calm's Scorching and Calypso Zord. Because, I mean, if you've, if you've ever just, like, dicked around on Spotify or something like that, mm-hmm. there's some wild stuff on there. Like, oh, weird yeah. names like this, like, oh, yeah. one-track songs, right. dudes that definitely just record something on their iPhone and uploaded it. Right. Like, there is that stuff on there if you really look for it. But I'm assuming at this level of listens, you wouldn't have to really look for it. It would just show up. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I, it, if you're listening to, like, 
I don't want to say that like corporate ad music on Spotify, but like lo-fi or beats yeah, or sure, sure, you know, right. calming tunes. Right. It it may get recommended. Interesting. And I wonder if that did happen to the people in the in the local North Carolina area. Because then you could also argue, or at least this guy could argue in court, that, well, there are also real people listening. But again, yeah. how would you prove that? Yeah, right. And how do you... Oh, yeah. And, like, would the IP... I mean, I guess the IP address would be different, but, like, it's so close that... Yeah. I don't know. Strange. Very, very interesting. And it's, like... Oh, let AI. me know, let me know if you've known any of these uh, songs to be missing from your liked music on Spotify. 216-859-8699. If you want to join the Screen Actors Guild, <laughs> I don't have the number for that. But I do have the number for the Rebel Radio Show. It's 216-859-8699. Once again, 216-859-8699. That works for all of the programming on WSRR Radio, whether it's the Rebel Radio Show, live every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern, or Shaney's show off-air. That is the truth. The Pigeon Show, The Pigeon Hole, mm. or any of the great music programming that we have, 24-7-365, you can use that text line, 216-859-8699. Again, we're sponsored by Synergy Music Studio out of Chicago, Illinois. So if you're in the area, you can stop by the Synergy Studios and do your session, as well as the Synergy Naked session that includes live video and production in that as well. Or if you're outside of Chicago, take advantage of their reamping service and get your tracks, album, or radio ready. Once again, Synergy Music Studio out of Chicago. Also want to give a shout out to genericclothes.com. Tell those big brand corporate cucks they can suck it and get straight to the point with genericclothes.com. And our newest sponsor, Hellbender Vinyl out of Pittsburgh, Mm. PA. If you're local, they even offer delivery to your house when you order your vinyls. Nice. They are one of the premier custom vinyl pressing plants and most trusted in America. And they're also PA's only vinyl record pressing plant, and they do a lot of work to support local and independent artists like you here on WSRR Radio, of course, the home of underground music. Make sure you tune in 10 p.m. Eastern on weekdays as well for True Vault Escapades. It's the Fallout-based radio drama by Preston Hardin. And if you want to chat about anything I just talked about or talk about conspiracy theories, liminal spaces, Marvel wrestling, yeah. you can always go to the WSRR Discord server. It's available at WSRRradio.com, along with full schedules, showtimes, and more. And real quick, before we get out of here, we yeah. are getting close to spooky season. Ooh. That means all conspiracies all October long. And, man, we've done a laundry list of them now over five years. Wait, uh, I'm, I think I'm channeling a new spooky noise for the season. Ready? Ready? Hold on. Okay, don't look. Everybody turn around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. So if you want to see the laundry list of all the theories we've talked about and recommend some for this year that you're passionate about, again, that can be found on the Discord server at WSRRradio.com. Until next time, I've been Radio's Rebel DJ Style. To my right, Shaney. Bye, everyone. On the board is Jules. Bye. Peace. Peace.